Kat, it's good to see you. <laughs> nice to see how you, long, How long have you been at UMS as an intern? I've been here for three years now. Yeah. I started my first semester of freshman year. Can you imagine? And I've learned how to say your name, Kat DeBartolomis. 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 Okay. And, and it's, it's, DeBartolomis. it's Ken Fisher. Oh, well, mine is easier than yours. <laughs> it's been so interesting how so many of our uh, interns over the 30 years I've been in the gig are now you know, in the, in the field mm -hmm. doing really interesting things. It opens your eyes to this whole world of performing arts and yeah. presenting and music and culture and kind of bringing people together through, through, through the arts, yeah. which I think is really important. That's right. what drew me to UMS in the first place. So I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and for oh, me getting the chance to interview mm -hmm. you a little bit and ask you a couple questions. So one of my goals as a student here at U of M and also just in life in general is to never get too comfortable in what I'm doing. Um, I always want to be learning and exploring new things, and I feel like you have been a really great example of that. So that being said, how have you defined success for yourself throughout your career, and how have you decided um, kind of to follow the path that you have? Well, you know, that's, that's really interesting because um, I, was, I was thinking about this the other day, and I, I'm not a guy that's ever had like a long-range plan for myself. Okay. Um, I've kind of tried to live you know, in the moment is in, is in, in, and learn as much as I can about the situation mm -hmm. that I'm in. And I've been lucky that things have, uh, have evolved. And I'm curious, so I ask people questions, uh, and that eventually leads to something. And I've always been really interested in, in people. And uh, so the, let's just think about, you know, the, the first job I had out of graduate school, mm -hmm. Uh, was to work on the President's Commission on Campus Unrest. I said to myself, once this commission was announced, that's where I belong. I mm -hmm. should go to Washington. I was in the middle of working on my doctorate here, but it seemed that was too interesting an opportunity to pass up. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, uh, I was able to get a job there for the summer, and I found that I just loved Washington so much that well, I was offered a job and I called my wife and said, honey, I think this is where we belong. And despite the fact that she had just been awarded a full ride for her doctorate here, she said, if this is right for the family, then I'll, I'll come. I can, I can start my graduate work in the Washington, D.C. area. It's amazing. And then um, uh, I worked in the higher education association world mm -hmm. and um, didn't know what I was going to do. I was on soft money. And uh, believe it or not, a friend of mine had me sit down with a psychic. This guy was a medical Crazy. doctor, a okay. medical doctor, but he had this special ability and, and he didn't know anything about me. And uh, he, he kind of held my hand, this was at a dinner, and said, uh, uh, Ken, it's time to get off soft money and it'll all work out in December. Hmm. This was in July of uh, 19, uh, 1978. Okay, so what'd you do? Well, it's what, what happened. Um, I was offered a job for a year mm -hmm. with a salary, and uh, I found out about that in December. That's amazing. And all of a sudden, I had an opportunity to be on a retainer, meaning you were paid, you could guarantee what you're going to make each month. And then I was free to do other, other things. And it was then that I was getting involved in the performing arts and uh, eventually did my first concert at the Kennedy Center. And that was kind of on a whim. I wanted to hear this particular group and the major presenters in Washington weren't interested in hearing this particular group or presenting it to its audience. So I said, well, what the heck? I'll go put on a show. Right. And never having rented the Kennedy Center, I went and talked to this uh, person. And next thing I knew, I had Valentine's Day of 1983 available to me to put on a show. And look what happened. You know, we there had a are. great success with that particular group called the King Singers. I presented them three more times. And, um, and then it was my son and, and my wife that sat me down and said, Dad... You're now, you have this consulting business that you're in, and now you're involved in the performing arts, and each of those has its ups and downs. 
maybe we need more stability and security in this household. And I said, you know what, you're right. And that's when the job in Ann Arbor uh, opened up. Mm -hmm. And um, I never thought they'd be interested in me because I hadn't, I'd done a, these, what I would call dilettante gigs at the Kennedy Center, put on a show. And, but I never had designed a season. I hadn't had a big staff. And I certainly had e enormous respect and adm admiration for this oldest university presenting organization in the country. Long story short, they hired me, and that was 30 years ago. That's amazing. And I've just had, had the greatest time. But all through, you know, what, what, as I think about it, it was being open to a uh, new experience, mm -hmm. uh, asking questions, uh, being curious. Mm -hmm. um, so you've asked for the definition of success. You know, I think it's, it's um, been a matter of just trying to do my best with whatever it, it was, surround myself with really wonderful people. Say you go right. back to yourself at 20, so where I'm at right now, what would you tell yourself? Follow your heart. Mm -hmm. uh, Listen, learn, because <clears throat> when I was 20, I thought I was going to be a college chaplain. I was a religion major at the College of Worcester in Ohio. Mm -hmm. While I was intending to enroll in Union Theological Seminary in New York, I ended up coming to a program in the study of higher education here at the University of Michigan when I'd concluded, I don't think I've got it right. to be a college chaplain, but I would love to work in college and university work. And I was able to get into a program kind of by mistake. You were supposed to have a master's degree and two years of work. Mm -hmm. And I, I was 21. I had no experience oh. and uh, I didn't have a master's degree. And so I th think I was sort of admitted by mistake, but I became part of a group of, of uh, marvelous graduate students, all of whom were older, more mature, and very ambitious to become you know, college presidents and, and leaders. And here's this 21-year-old kid. Look who I was able to learn from. It's you great. know, these folks with master's degrees from the Harvard Business School, law degrees from Georgetown, and they all had in mind, they wanted to get on college campuses and, and make, a, make an impact. Well, look what I was able to learn over the four years that I was here from these people, mm -hmm. uh, men and women, so that's really how it works, right. is that you put, you put yourself in a position where you're going to meet other folks, where you hope the, the climate is such that you can ask. I mean, that's the thing. You know, it's being accessible. Right. The key would be then to, once that introduction is made, follow up. Mm -hmm. That is the most important I'd thing. When to. the door has opened, mm -hmm. you need to walk through it. Mm -hmm. You need to make that, that contact. And then, of course, networking um, mm -hmm. is, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of the heart of what, you know, carry, have a, have a business card with you when you go. And, and one of the things that, uh, over the years that, that I've tried to always have in my pocket is, you know, here's, here's the schedule of our concerts. So did you learn anything from what I just told you? A few of the things that you spoke to that mm -hmm. really resonate with me. The first is relationship building. So I 100% agree. I think it's so important to make sure that every person that you meet, you first of all treat with respect and kindness because mm -hmm. you never know where they're going to end up, right? Um, and to be so giving of yourself, to want to mm -hmm. spend time with another person and to, and to really learn who they are, I think is really valuable. So like to learn that and learn that that's like one of the pillars of your success. Mm -hmm. And then you were also mentioning how important it is to be curious mm -hmm. and ask questions. Um, and I think that's something I'll definitely take with me too. I think kind of speaking to my point earlier, I never want to stop learning. I never want to just sit there and be comfortable, so comfortable in what I'm doing that it seems like it's mundane work every day. There, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's terrific. really again appreciate you taking the time to talk to me like it's always it's always nice to hear from someone who <clears throat> just can confirm kind of what you're doing and maybe tell you it's okay to change paths in life and pursue three things that you might love and 
Well, it, and it could probably it could be many more for you. It's keep your mind open. Exactly. Meet people. Right. Uh, be curious. Uh, yeah. So those are. I think that I'm glad to know those are the takeaways for you because yeah. I think that's what I was trying to convey. Is just you know be open, and uh, and you'll be you'll be just very successful. I'm sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good. Oh. Well, thank you, Ken. <laughs> You're welcome.